I think that we are all influenced by our past, all of us. And my heritage wasn't given to me as in, here's how to be a Creek Indian or here's how to be a Choctaw Indian. My mother was Creek and my father was Choctaw and Scots-Irish. And uh, he was killed in World War II, which left my mother at 15 a widow with a tiny baby. And she had to go to work and go to school. She had no education. She was very, 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 very poor. Um, go to work, go to school, get a new husband, because you had to have a husband to be validated in Texas and Oklahoma at that time. Mother was from Wilitka, Oklahoma. Daddy was from Wetumpka. So she, she tried to get along in Oklahoma, but evidently there was bad blood in the family. <laughs> she took me to Texas and went to work in the daytime and went to school at night, or the reverse. And that's hard to do when you have a tiny infant with you or a little girl. So she would leave me with people who would take care of me. And some were good and some were not so good. So, uh, but the interesting thing is that when she went to work or to get a job, Native Americans were not held in high regard in those days. And I'm 80 and I'm talking 1940s. And so she told them that her heritage was Mediterranean because she had dark skin, dark hair, dark eyes, you know. And so she passed herself off. And uh, she had very little heritage that was given to her, honestly. So I do know two things about my mother's religion is that she never, she could never practice religion indoors. She would always go outside and pray. And uh, she always made sure that I went to the school or the church nearest to the house, but she would never go inside to talk to God. She'd always go outside. And uh, her word was her religion, and loyalty was her religion. Once she gave her word, that was it. So these things I learned by example from her. I was never taught. So how does it affect my work? Longing. I longed to know. I longed for. So when I was growing up in Texas and Oklahoma, I heard the legend of Quanah Parker. Quanah was the last great chief of the Comanches when they were out on the staked plains. And he realized that he had to bring his people in because they were being killed. Loving Goodnight had um, formed the Texas Rangers to kill, eradicate the Comanche, go down into Paladura Canyon and kill all the women and children while the men were out hunting and then assassinate them as they came home. So he realized that he had to take his people in. And so he took them into uh, Fort Sill and then they slaughtered the horses and threw the meat over the fence to them. <laughs> but there would be no Comanches today if he hadn't done that. So I grew up with this legend of Quanta Parker and I don't always. So fade in, fade out. Mother asked me at a very early age, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, well, I'm going to be a famous actress and take you around the world. Well, she said, you can't be an actress. You've never even been to a movie. And I said, all right, take me to see one. So we did. And it was a Western, and the man was hung, and I cried all the way home, and Mother, we're bouncing on this country road on a pickup, and Mother said, Sister, you got to quit that crying. She said, that man lived. He made another movie, and I'll take you to see it, but you got to quit that crying. So I thought, man, that's for me. You never die in the movies. <laughs> I don't know. I came in that way. So for my, my, my day job, I'm an actress, and I am still working, and uh, I'm 80. <laughs> so this is a good long run, isn't it? And uh, I realized that all of the women who raised me, all the people that mother left me with, I play them. It's like sitting on top of a gold mine. And I realize that, you know, every character I play is something within me, yes, but all the characteristics 
I learned from those, and I loved to play the women who were gossipy and do as I say, not as I do, you know, and they would go around the neighborhood and backbite each other. I loved to play those because they were wonderful. When I was growing up, I didn't like them very much, but I love to play them now. So my, my heritage has been catch as catch can. I didn't have much Creek heritage from my mother or Choctaw from my father, but I had a great longing. I had a great longing. And the interesting thing is that I feel more connected with the creator when I hear the drum or when I smell smoke from the cedar or sage that we're doing a blessing with. I feel more connected then than I ever have indoors in church. <laughs> and I can sing all of the gospel songs, the old gospel songs, but I really feel connected when I hear that drum. Now the piece I am uh, that was most personal to me was the one in which I have pictures of my little mother and my uh, handsome father who this picture was taken as my father was being shipped out to Italy. And they, it was like, you know, put a quarter in the machine and take five pictures. It was that strip of little pictures. And that's the only picture I have of the three of us. And I've also included his purple heart and silver star. He was killed in Italy. I've been to Italy to honor his grave. And when I was there on one Memorial Day, when the Carabinieri were playing, I looked over and at the service I saw an elder and I went over to introduce myself to him. And I said, I don't mean to intrude, but my father's Choctaw, he's bare. And of course he was a Choctaw elder because they, um, they sent them overseas in columns out of the country. They drafted in columns thinking, very like Saving Private Ryan, that the men who knew each other would fight harder and be more loyal to the people they knew. So of course they were all killed together. And of course it left whole chunks of the whole country uh, with no men, no fathers and brothers and husbands and uncles, you know, so the women just learned to plant and saw and hoe and hammer and, you know, do all these things ourselves. We're very self-sufficient, these women. So there's that little piece. And then there is um, a picture of when I was um, I, an actress, I was in New York, I was working on the show and I thought, I want to make something about Quanah Parker. I want to make a, a, a documentary or a film about Quanah Parker. So I took myself down to Cache, Oklahoma. Quana built, uh, Quana was, it, it became a, a, a great leader of his people, and he was, I was always enamored of the legend of Quana Parker, because he was a great leader of his people. He brought the men off the staked plains because they were being hunted and killed, and he knew that if they didn't come into quote-unquote civilization, they would all be eradicated. So he brought them in, and then he became a great leader, a great spokesperson for his people, and he went to uh, Washington, and he became a, a diplomat for his people in Washington, he was very well respected. And he built in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma, this big rambling house for his family. Do we need to stop? No, no, please. Okay. He built, and in Lawton, Oklahoma, he built a big rambling house for his family. And one day a general from the army was coming for lunch and he wanted more stars on his roof than the general had on his shoulders. So he had his boys go up and paint stars on the top of his house. And the house is called Star House and it still stands. So when I went down to um, do some, my research on Quana, I was uh, I, I met the uh, the part the descendants of the Parker family and um, we got along so well. They asked me if I would please be um, in their outdoor pageants that they were having to raise money, and I said sure. So Cynthia Ann Parker was Quana's mother, and she was white, and she was kidnapped as a child and taken to raise, and later grew up as a Comanche 
and had Quana and her daughter Prairie Flower. And then she was later re-kidnapped by the whites and taken back into quote-unquote civilization where she died. And that's a very sad story. But I was asked to play Cynthia Ann in this outdoor pageant to honor Quana and to raise money. So I did, and I did that for four years. And then we got along so well, the descendants and I, that I was asked to be in family, which is a tradition with the Comanches. They invite people to be in family. And my naming ceremony was at Star House, and it was in the evening, and we were having big powwow. And, you know, there's the drum and the flagpole, the flag right in front of Star House. And they came to me and asked me, so... Fade in, fade out, I did grow up to be an actress, and I was on a national television show, and I was thinking, oh, I'd like to do something else. You know, I'd like to go down. I will go down and make a, a documentary or a film about Quanah Parker because I'd always loved the legend of this man. So down to, I went down to Lawton, and I found uh, his descendants and introduced myself and got to know them. And because I was on national television on a very popular show at the time, they asked me to be uh, in their outdoor pageant about the story of Quanah Parker and his white mother, Cynthia Ann Parker, who had been taken as a child to raise in, uh, by the Comanches and then later retaken into quote-unquote civilization, and it ended badly. But they asked me if I would play Cynthia Ann Parker in an outdoor pageant, and I said, oh, yes, of course. And I did that for about four years, and then they took me into family, and that's a great tradition with the Comanches. And so on my naming day, big powwow, late at night, and in front of Star House, we were having this ceremony, and they came to ask, what dance will you have? And I said, the war dance to honor my father, who been killed in World War II. And so we began to dance around. Now the lights were behind us, shining our shadows up on Star House. And as we came around, I looked up and realized that there were more shadows than the people dancing. And I seemed to understand at that moment that there were, I'm standing on the shoulders of all of my ancestors. All of us are all connected. We are all this family of humanity in this dance as we go through our lives. And that's what that piece is about. There are people dancing around. There's a people of, uh, the picture of Quana. There's a picture of me dressed as Cynthia Ann and being blessed before we go and do this pageant. And there are the, uh, in clay, there are the, the dancers around their star house, and there are all those shadows that were projected up on star house. And I've always remembered that. And also, there is a piece over here called Redville Out. And no matter how long you've lived in the white culture, your connection to the creator and an older connection is there if you're Indian. It just is there. And it will come out in odd, odd ways. So I used the red clay, and I burnished back the, the painting of the white veneer on it. And I have um, included all of the things. My family name was Deer, D-E-E-R. So there are deer toes <laughs> in that piece. And um, other pieces, uh, this birds of a feather, same thing. Birds of a feather, we're all birds of the fa same family. We're human birds of a feather. We stick together. <laughs> we, 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 what are we going to do? Diverse, you know, divorce ourselves from one another? I don't think it's possible. Yeah. Oh, this is a great honor. This is a great honor. I am not affiliated with my tribe because I do not have my grandfather's birth certificate. My grandfather was a Creek Indian who was shot and killed, murdered, coming home from Wilitka with his reparations money. And he, his body was thrown into a ditch and it was half eaten by hogs before his wife came along in the wagon to find it. She picked the remains up, 
took it home. They buried him. He doesn't have a death certificate, so I can't be acknowledged by my tribe. Uh, my degree of Indian blood wasn't awarded to me. So, but it doesn't matter because I know our history. I know what my mother's life was like. I know, and so it doesn't matter. But I am so, you know, being very fair, <laughs> the Scots-Irish came out, <laughs> being very fair, um, you wouldn't know my heritage. But it's okay. Being very fair, you would not know my heritage. So I don't want to be what we call a wannabe, but I know what I am, and to be accepted by this group is a great honor.